Okay, we're going to talk about applications of Taylor polynomials. Okay, so you remember from Calc 1 that we were able to calculate or at least to approximate certain things by using the tangent line. So the classic example is supposing we want to um, understand the square root of, say, 101. Okay? So the smart way to do this, or at least the smart way to approximate this quantity, is to take the tangent line of the function f of x is the square root of x, take the tangent line at 100, okay? And that tangent line will just be a linear function. It'll It'll be something which is easy to calculate. And we're just going to stick in the value 101 into the tangent line. And the difference between the tangent line and the actual function is incredibly small at this, at this particular point, 101, right, as you can see from the picture. And uh, this, I mean, we, we saw in class, or hopefully you saw in class, that, that the approximation is just, just strikingly good. And this problem here, without actually doing approximation, is quite hard. So if you just gave you this quantity to figure out by some other means, you'd, you'd, be, you'd be kind of stuck, right? So um, this topic is somewhat related. Well, I'll say that again. This topic is very related, but it's a kind of much more general, more powerful tool. Um, so as, as you know well, the, the tangent line is just the first two terms of the Taylor expansion. In other words, it's the Taylor polynomial T1. So let's recall what Taylor polynomials are. So Tn of x is just the nth order polynomial, which is given by the first n or n plus 1, including the constant term, terms of the Taylor series. So from k equals 0 up to n, the k derivative at a, wherever we're doing the series, over k factorial, x minus a to the k. Right? So if we do the first terms, f of a, f prime of a, x minus a. This is the tangent line, and then we get these other terms. Second derivative at a, x minus a squared over 2, plus da 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 da. Final term, nth derivative at a over n factorial, x minus a to the n. Okay? So it's an nth order polynomial. And what's the advantage of this? Um, the advantage is that we don't have to make the interval very, very small to make the approximation good. We have another way, which is simply to take more and more terms. So we saw this when we started talking about Taylor expansions, that uh, since we're going to do the, the example sign, let's actually use that one. So if we take, for example, sign. Okay. So if we wanted to approximate sign, say, between here and here, whatever, say this is um, um, 3 pi over 8, and say this is pi over 4, okay? Uh, we could take the tangent line right here in the center and do a pretty good job, right? But if we want to get a better approximation, we could simply not just take the tangent line, but take T2, so take the quadratic term as well, right? And that'll give us a much better approximation. And to get better still, we could take uh, T3, include the cubic term, and that gets closer still. And the advantage of this is that all these things are calculatable. So if we just took T2, this coefficients here are just numbers. They're just numbers, we can calculate them and we can calculate all of these things with their numbers too, right? So if you can imagine some unfortunate future where scientists are ignored, obvious problems are allowed to develop and society collapses, um, then we have to build up from scratch. We don't have computers. What would we do to calculate sine? Well, you know, it's it's not a trivial thing, right? It seems trivial now because you just type it into a computer, but uh, it won't be without these machines that we've built. 
and we just we just left around devices we don't have much for where to start but we can for sure just put numbers into polynomials and calculate those right so instead of dealing with sine we can deal with a polynomial which we can explicitly calculate any value inside a polynomial because we can add and multiply numbers for sure that we can do so that's the point of uh, this section instead of dealing with some potentially quite complicated function we're going to deal with a polynomial and this is used an awful lot in physics so most of you are engineers but if you are physicists then there are many functions that come up in physics many formulae and you and rather than actually uh, get a feeling for what the physical situation by dealing with the, the the formula itself whatever function is defined in the for whatever function is used in the formula physicists tend to just say okay let's not let's not Let's not get too fancy here. Let's just take the first, whatever, three terms of the Taylor expansion and see what that looks like. And that does a good job uh, for most of their practical purposes. So this is like a very common thing to do um, as, you, as you study physics. And, uh, and it's actually common in maths as well. We, we do this all the time too. So this is what this topic is about. And uh, there are two main things uh, we have to learn. Um, Calculating the Taylor, the Taylor polynomial itself is just is just is just something we've already practiced. It's just getting these coefficients and writing it out. That's not hard. The second thing, well, the, the new thing we have to learn is to tell the difference or to calculate to approximate the difference between the, the Taylor polynomial and the actual function. And we've discussed this already. We have this great tool which is Taylor's inequality. So we define our n x to be the difference between the function and the nth order Taylor polynomial. And this thing is bounded above by m times x minus a to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial, where m is the supremum of the absolute value of the nth plus 1th derivative over whatever interval we're doing this. So say it was like a minus r, a plus r, okay? So this is exactly the tool that allows us to, to, to know the difference between the, the nth order Taylor polynomial and the actual function. So sometimes we're gonna have to do this. Um, and it's not incredibly hard, but it's, it's a slightly more hard job than other approximation uh, type problems because we have to consider the supremum of this quantity over some interval and it's, an, it's, it's not quite just as, it's not quite as trivial as for example the error from the integral test or the alternating series um, alternating series theorem test uh, but the good news is that sometimes when we calculate the Taylor expansion it just happens that for every single choice of x the Taylor expansion will be an alternating series so we don't have to use this somewhat heavier machine. We can just use the alternating series uh, error approximation theorem, which is a much easier and more natural theorem. It doesn't involve calculating the supremum or anything. OK, so that is what we're going to do. That's what we're going to learn. We're going to do two examples. One example where we can't use the alternating theorem, the alternating series error estimation theorem, and the other one uh, and therefore have to use this and the other one where we can just use the alternating uh, alternating series error approximation theorem. All right, so let me just start by putting down the, uh, the first question we're going to do. So this is example one. So part A, approximate this function, f of x, which is this quantity, the third root of x by, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna write t2, because we know what it is, it's the Taylor polynomial, order two by t2 over the interval uh, seven to nine, and we'll find the error. OK, 
Okay, that's our problem. All right, let's start with this. Okay, so let's get to work with this. So the first thing we need to do is to determine whether or not we can just use the alternating series error estimation theorem. So uh, we need to calculate what the, we have need to take a look at the Taylor expansion. So this is our function. And we're gonna start to calculate its Taylor series. So we start taking derivatives. and so on and so on and so on and so on. Let's try and get a general formula. So what are we gonna get? So, oops, this is three of course, so it's gonna be one over three minus k minus one, x to the one over three minus k, let's check if that works. So when k is equal to one, it gives this. When k equals two, it gives this. So this is the right formula. Cool, so um, it looks very weird the way I've actually written it though. Let me write that again. <laughs> So we're just going to plug in x equals 8 into this thing. Um, but the, uh, the issue is about whether or not we got an alternating series or not. So let's write out what the Taylor series is. It's k equals 0 to infinity. So it's the kth order derivative. Uh, we're doing this at 8 over k factorial x minus 8 to the k. All right, so let's check out the signs of these expressions. So the x is um, just going to be 8, so that's not going to affect the signs. So what do we see about the signs of this expression here? We see that the signs, so first let me define sign. So by sign of some number x, I just mean x over mod x. If x is not equal to 0, so it's going to be plus 1 for positive and minus 1 for negative. And let's see what we see about the sign. So let's just look at the definition right here. What about the sign of these coefficients? So if we take the sign of the kth order derivative, we're doing this at 8. Not that it matters, any number's the same, or any positive number's the same. What's going to happen here? Uh, so here we are positive, here we are negative, and here we are positive. So it's going to be minus 1 uh, to the k plus 1, right? Because when we are 1, we are positive. When we are 2, we are negative. So this is the sign of this expression. What about the sign? Oops. What about the sign of x minus 8 to the k? Well, obviously positive if x is bigger than 8, but if x is less than 8, so x is less than 8, what happens then? This is just going to be minus 1 to the k. Right? So what about the signs of these terms? Well, this one will be alternating minus 1 to the k plus 1, and this one will be minus 1 to the k. So the signs will be negative uh, 
overall, at least from k equals 2 onwards, right? Because from k equals 2 onwards, we start to alternate uh, with respect to the signs. The first two are positive, but then we start to alternate. So this is only true for k equals 2 onwards. At least k is 1 onwards. k beginning with a 1. So this guy definitely not is, is definitely not an alternate series because again, if x is less than 8, then this sign will be minus 1 to the k. This one will be minus 1 to the k plus 1. So we multiply those things out. We're going to have minus 1 to the 2k, which is positive, times minus 1. So these terms will all be negative from um, k onwards. Uh, sorry, from k equals 1 onwards. So there's no alternating structure here. So not alternating. So we can't use the alternating series error estimation theorem. So instead, we're going to have to use uh, Taylor's inequality. And uh, we are doing, we're approximating this by T2. So what we're actually estimating is R3, OK? And R3 is less than supremum of the third derivative. Let me just write it like this as m. And then it's going to be uh, absolute value of x minus 8 to the 3. over 3 factorial, where m is the supremum of the third derivative. So it should be r2, because it's a second Taylor polynomial. It's the supremum of the third derivative uh, where x is between 7 and 8. Okay, That's Taylor's inequality, which we have to use. All right, so we need, the uh, we need to calculate this quantity m. And we've got the formula. Oh, we don't have the formula. Let's put the third derivative here. Okay, so um, what will m be? Well, m will be less than 1 over 3 times 2 over 3 times 5 over 3. And then this is 1 over x to the 8 over 3, right? So this thing will be biggest when x is smallest, right? And x is smallest at 7, right? So then this will be like 7 to the uh, minus 8 over 3. And what's that? So that's going to be like 10 over 27 times 7 to the 8 over 3. Okay, and that is some quantity. That's like 0 0.0021. Cool. But we are not done because that's just the m. So actually r2 is less than. So this thing is, is going to be less than 1 as x goes between 7 and 9. So it's just we have to divide this by 3 factorial. So it's 0, 0, 0, 2, 1 over 3 factorial, which is again 27. And this is like 0 0.0004, or at least it's less than that. Cool. So that is our answer. So we are asked how well does our function, which is, again, the third root. So this is the third root. It looks like this. And we are approximated around 8. And we want to know how good is the approximation over the range from 7 to 9. OK. And the T2, uh, maybe I didn't actually write it down. 
Uh, perhaps I actually forgot to write it down. Yeah, let's write down T2. So T2, the thing which we are actually approximating this by. So T2 of x is just this expression up to order 2. So we have a constant term when we have 8, 1 over 3. And then we're going to have 1 over 3, 8 to the minus 2 over 3, and then x minus 8. This is just the tangent, these, the tangent line, these first two terms, and then we have the quadratic term, which, sure enough, has to curl down. So we have 1 over 3 minus 2 over 3, uh, 8 to the minus 5 over 3, so it's negative, and then x minus 8 squared. And again, we'd expect it to curl down because this thing's got this concave shape. So this is a quadratic which is bending down. So it kind of looks like something like this. Right? But it does a very good job of approximating, much better than my picture indicates. So the absolute maximum gap between this guy, T2, and the actual guy we want to approximate is really, really small. So this gap is less than 0 0.0004, which is a pretty small error over quite a wide interval. So uh, approximating things by the Taylor polynomials actually gets you very accurate answers. And plugging something into an expression like this is something you can indeed calculate. So for any particular value between 7 and 9, calculating what this is is a much easier job than calculating the third root of it. Calculating the third root of 7.3, that's, that's a terrible thing to try and do by hand, right? Whereas if we want to put 7.3 into that, it's not pretty, it's not a fun thing to do, but we can actually get to the end of that and get some specific answer. It will take us less than 25 minutes, right? So this is, for practical purposes, a very useful thing to be able to do. Cool, let's do another example. Okay, example two. Let's change color. What is the max error between sine? and x minus x to the 3 over 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial over uh, uh, minus 0 0.3 to 0 0.3. That's part A. Part B. Part B is of what interval do we have to be to get within 0 0.0005? So Zero point zero 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 five four zeros. Yep. And part C. Uh, approximate 
or use T5 fifth order Taylor polynomial to approximate sine of 12 degrees. Okay, cool. So this is kind of uh, the thing I was alluding to back at the start, that if we had no computers and if we were down to tragedy, trying to calculate things like sine of 12 degrees, we would be using exactly this. We would have not much choice. So um, this is the first terms of the Taylor expansion. The order is five, so this is T5. Right? And let's see if we have to use Taylor's inequality or let's see if we have an alternating series. Well, we know what the expansion for sine is. Right? So we did this before. OK, equals 0 to infinity minus 1 to the k x to the 2k plus 1 over 2k plus 1 factorial. OK, so if x is positive, this is definitely an alternating series, right? Yeah. And if x is negative, it's still alternating, because if x is negative, then any negative power to an odd power is still negative. So it's still alternating. So we don't have to use Taylor's inequality in this case, which makes things a little bit technically easier. OK, so let me write that down. So only, because so I can use, or can just use, alt series. It's not how you spell series. Alternating series, error, estimation, theorem, okay, which we've talked about lots of times, or at least several times, and let's put it over here. So if S is the alternating series, k equals 1, oh, so 0, to minus 1 to the k, bk, and Sn is the Sn partial sum, 0 to n. Then the difference between the two is less than the bn plus 1 step size, which comes with a very natural picture, right? So. S n minus S is less than B n plus 1. OK, so we can get away with just using that. So um, the first part is this thing. How close are we within this error? Let's draw a picture just to uh, clarify for ourselves what we're doing. So this is a picture of a sine function, not a very good one. OK, this is 0 0.3. This is minus 0 0.3. And over this interval, we are going to try and get uh, see how close this T5 is. Let's take the green. So T5 is some kind of function like this, say. OK, and we're going to try and see what the maximum error is. And all we need to do is just use the fact that for any x between minus 0.3 and plus 0.3, this is an alternating series, right? This is an alternating series. So let's take a green color. If uh, 0 point, or minus 0 0.3. 0.3, then forget about the fact that this is a power series. Just think, okay, this is now an alternating series. That's all you want to think about it in terms of. And what is this? This is just the first three terms, right? So and now I'm going to write S3 as this thing. This is just the first three terms of this thing. Okay, so this might cause you guys 
a certain amount of confusion because I was writing T5 and now I'm writing S3 and I'll explain in a, in a second. Okay, so the reason we call this T5 is that the Taylor polynomial is defined by the order of the polynomial, right? So even though we have only three terms, the order of the polynomial is five, so it's T5, right? If we forget about the fact that it's a series, we just take X as some fixed number between this range, and then we just consider it as a series with this X already chosen, then Sn is just the Sn partial sum. That's the sum of the first n terms. So in this case, S3 is the sum of the first three terms. Okay? This isn't a big deal. It's just, it's easier to, it's easier to distinguish the order of the polynomial as the important thing in the Taylor polynomial. So T1, therefore, is always the tangent line. T2 is when you put the quadratic. Okay? So this is S3 because we have the first three terms, even though if, when we think of this as a function of x, it's a polynomial of order five, so I'd write it as t of x. So this is, this is, what, this is, a, this is a thing in math, that you have multiple ways of seeing something, right? This expression for fixed x, I can just think of the sum of three terms, right? I can also think of this as I vary x as a polynomial in x, in which case it's a word of five, but it's the, it's the same thing, it's just I'm viewing it in different ways. And right now I'm choosing it to view it just as for fixed x, an individual series, because then it allows me to apply the alternating series error estimation. Okay, so that's S3, and we know by the theorem, it's a very bad and, let me erase that, And we know that the difference between the actual answer, which is so, that is the sum of this alternating series, minus these first three terms, is less than the size of the, in this case, the fourth term, right? The Bn plus one term, right? And what will that be? So the next term will be x to the 7 over 7 factorial, right? So since the range is between minus 0.3 and 0.3, this will be 0 0.3 to the 7 over 7 factorial, right? So let's elaborate this a little bit more. So if we just wrote out the first few terms, what would we have? We would have x 3 over 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial minus x. x to the 7 over 7 factorial. So the, the size of the next step is given by this quantity, but we've chosen x to be 0 0.3, so that's why we have this. Okay, so this is morally the bn plus one step size, okay? This is morally bn plus one. Okay, so that's why we have this. So this is the quantity that we need to calculate, or at least we're not gonna calculate, we have it pre-calculated for us. So this quantity is Four point three times ten to the minus eight. Okay. Four point three times ten to the minus eight. And that's our answer. So we know that this function sine is approximated by T five with incredibly small error over this not particularly small range, which again shows how powerful this this stuff is. You can really fit your function very well by your Taylor polynomial just by going up not very far along the line of the of the Taylor series. So power five isn't particularly high along the line. I mean the Taylor expansion has infinitely many terms. We've just taken the first three, but we get to an incredibly small error here. 
So this error is less than 4.3 times 10 to the minus 8. Okay. Um, second part. Uh, if we wanted to get the error within this thing, how close would we get? So let's see if we can squeeze that answer down here. So we've learned that we just need to approximate the difference with this expression, right? So what we know is that T5 minus sine, write it like this, Five of x minus sine of x is less than the absolute value of x. So seven over seven factorial. Right? And now the job is to try and find the interval somewhere here to here, such that that error is even smaller. Well, actually, we are well within that, so we can actually take the interval to be bigger, not smaller. So we're allowed to want to see how far out we can go and still get the error within 0 0.00005. So that quantity is the thing we want to be less than 0 0.0005, right? So. We want t5 of x minus sine of x to be less than 0 0.00005, okay? True, given this inequality, if we have that mod x to the 7 over 7 factorial is less than, so let's write this as uh, 5 over what? So this is going to be 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so that is what we uh, see. So that's equivalent to having mod x to the power 7 less than 5 times 7 factorial over 100,000. And That is equal to zero point two five two. So the actual answer is when mod x is less than the seventh root of this quantity, zero point two five two to one over seven. Okay, and that is like. 0 0.821. I fear you might not be able to see that. So let me put this somewhere else. Put it over here, say. So the actual answer is we just need x to be less than 0 0.821, which is way bigger. So instead of going from 0 0.3 or minus 0.3 to 0.3, we can actually go all the way out here close to 1. So this is like 0 0.821, and over here it's minus 0 0.821, and, uh, and wow, um, well, okay, my picture's off because we're still, the sign does not look like this around there, but 
it's a much wider interval and we still get an incredibly good approximation which further kind of validates what I said before that that taking uh, Taylor polynomials does an incredibly good job of approximating these functions. Okay, the final part was to use this to approximate um, a sine of 12 degrees. So let's do that and end with that. Okay, so approximate sine of twelve degrees. Okay, so uh, what is twelve degrees? So there's three hundred and sixty degrees, right? So what's this? Is this sine of twelve? over 360, and then there's two pi uh, radians around the circle, right? And what's that? That is sine of 24 over 360, which is pi over 15. Okay, and um, that's probably well within our range, but we can easily see how close that thing actually is uh, to its T5 at the value because we know well what the error is. So we know that T5 at pi over 50 minus sine of pi over 15 is less than pi over 15 to the power 7 over 7 factorial, right? This we know. This is the error that we found. And this is something that we can just calculate, right? So it turns out that this is equal to 4 well, this is, this is less than 10 to the 7. This is, sorry, this is less than 10 to the 8. So this is less than 10 to the minus 8, just by putting in the numbers. Right? So um, if we were in this post-civilization collapse world and we were building our house and we wanted this particular angle, then what would we do? We would just have t5 x, which once again, what is it? It is x minus x to the 3 over 3 factorial, which is 6 plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial. And we can just plug in pi over 15 into this, right? And we can do this calculation. We can find out what this thing is. This is an accessible task. And whatever that number actually is, that thing comes within 10 to the minus 8 of the thing we actually want. And uh, that's good enough for our building of our new houses or whatever we're doing. Okay, all right, that's it.